What are the differences and implications of implementing circadian and quantum biology in an extreme northern latitude like the UK versus somewhere like Georgia, where I live? Can you still do it? Can you still be successful? And can you still see health benefits? Today, I have my friend, Dr. Sarah Pugh here to talk about this. And Dr. Sarah was actually here at my house for five, almost six weeks up until about the middle of December. And so she has a lot of experience, especially after being here at my house and really understanding what it's like to implement circadian biology and quantum biology in a city in more of a Southern area. And then going back to the UK to implement circadian and quantum strategies, all these different pitfalls. So today, this is a bonus episode that I'm putting out here on the Sarah Flanner Wellness YouTube channel, as well as the Evolving Wellness Podcast. And I thought it would be really fun just to sit down and chat with Dr. Sarah. Now, as I mentioned, she's a really good friend of mine. Obviously, she just stayed at my house for five, almost six weeks. And she has a lot of amazing knowledge to share about quantum and circadian biology from a very, very interesting lens. So I hope that you find a lot of value in this conversation and take a lot of things from it, especially that you don't have to be limited necessarily by where you live, that you can still find health in the environment that you're in. And so again, I hope this is helpful. I did wanna mention really quickly that next week on January 25th, I am hosting a health transformation summit Dr. Sarah is one of my keynote speakers and she's doing a talk all about deuterium and she has a gift package. If you end up getting the premier package where you'll get $2,000 worth of courses from myself, from Carrie Bennett, from Dr. Sarah, from all of our speakers. And she has a really cool food list where you can actually see deuterium foods. People are always asking me how much deuterium is in this food and that food. She has a great list of foods and how to source foods based on quantum biology and circadian biology. Again, it's free to sign up for the Health Transformation Summit. You'll get to hear from the speakers that Carrie and I have chosen from everything about nervous system health to lymphatic drainage, skin health, easy water, how to live the circadian life. If you're a shift worker, you live in a city, you have a busy life, you have children, we have a ton of different topics, breathing, quantum exercise with Rob Jacobs. So it is free to sign up and free to watch all the talks live. And then if you decide to purchase the VIP pass, it's $99 and each of our speakers has contributed a course or an ebook for you that's worth over $2,000 that you'll get. My Circadian Health for the Busy Person course, four of Carrie's webinars worth $300. So that'll pay for it right there. And then again, you get lifetime access to these recordings. So let's jump into this chat with Sarah. If you're interested in that summit, you can do a free sign up or get the VIP link that is going to be in the pinned comment as well as in the show notes if you're listening on the audio only. I hope you enjoy this really fun conversation with Dr. Sarah and I'll talk with you again soon. Anyway, so today we're chatting about the different quantum biology approaches in different latitudes. So I live at the 53rd latitude and you live at the 30th and I've stayed uh, with you for quite a long time, which was a very big eye opener um, living in the US. So first of all, for people who are completely brand new to quantum biology, how could we sort of describe it to somebody who's heard the word but doesn't know what it is? It's a good question. I, I feel like it is a different way of looking at biology from a different lens, um, not necessarily the biochemical model that we've all been kind of ingrained in. And I know you and, and your background as a PhD studied at length and extensively. So it's a different way of looking at how the body works and how the body responds to things like temperature, light. Uh, we do a lot around light, um, grounding, uh, how electrons flow through the body, how the body can gather electrons, under, understanding uh, water, a huge emphasis on water, easy water inside of our bodies. And then, and then water that's outside the body as well. And just, that's my take on it. I'm, I know you might have a totally different take or view on it, but that's how I would explain it. If someone asked me. Oh, no, I agree. Because I think um, so that people know we've both had a sort of complicated, turbulent life and we've been down so many rabbit holes. So I think I think quantum biology is 
using physics to explain biology because everything or lots of things do work from all kinds of therapies, for example, sort of sound therapy, uh, traditional Chinese medicine, uh, different ways of eating, uh, of course, light, grounding, sometimes supplements work, sometimes medication works. And I think to me, quantum biology means having a lens to filter through what's impossible and just the placebo effect and what is actually a genuine phenomenon in the body. Because I'd never dismiss other people's um, approaches or techniques, but I just like to understand it in a, in terms of protons and electrons and mitochondria. And even though I have, have have training in movement, I still also now look at movement through a quantum lens because when we move fascia, we make uh, electrons and also fascia is piezoelectric. And also, interestingly, when we move in the day, the, uh, the mitochondria produce melatonin at the same time as we're moving in order to protect themselves. So I find this particularly interesting because people may have heard talk about exercising in blue light and how it actually completely undoes all of your workout. However, exercising in the correct light is how it should be. And I just think that's really interesting about the, the, the mitochondria and the, 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 the melatonin, because also another aspect of quantum biology is circadian rhythms and body clocks. And if that's broken and you've got a bad body clock, every single clock in your body down to your cells is going to run badly. So you're not going to be mm -hmm. very good at detoxing, protecting yourself, metabolism. So, so in a way it's, uh, sort of another angle to help people with problems because obviously we work with clients and, and we've had our own journeys so we know there's a big list of things that people come with hormone imbalances anxiety weight problems autoimmunity pain and i think that quantum biology is a really good way to look at, at um, these pro old problems to get new solutions but also it, it makes you be able to go back in time and dig out old therapies that have been around for 100 years like my current rabbit hole is a carbon dioxide but then uh, some of the people that we know uh, specialize in techniques that have been around for thousands of years yeah exactly I, I feel like it's a a really great and empowering way of looking at your health and it's not as limiting as again this kind of biochemical model that we've all that's all that's been available to us if we've gone through the allopathic world and even the functional medicine model is largely still based on this biochemical model. So I think a lot of people come to quantum health and circadian biology with these broken body clocks with uh, cells that are extremely confused and dehydrated and do a lot of the simple things that you and I talk about in the scope of health and see tremendous results and are able to stop putting all their focus on the supplements and, you know, not to say those never have a place, but there's less of an emphasis on what you're ingesting, what you're putting in your body and more of an emphasis on how do we support the organism to run more efficiently, to bring more electrons into the body, to expand exclusions on water in the body. How do we do that? And how does that enhance health? And I think that as, as people who work with a lot of people, we've seen firsthand for ourselves anecdotally, but also with a large sample size of people that these modalities are absolutely life-changing for a host of different health complications. So it's, it's definitely a topic that I think is up and coming. And I think it will, as time goes on, I think more and more people are open to hearing about it because that old biochemical model is failing people. Oh, definitely. Because I think you touched on something I was going to go into, which is leptin, because that's mm. your area of expertise, along with many other things, including teaching yoga. And also, again, with, with leptin, we need all these electrons, but we also need mm -hmm. them to be charged up with light, the photoelectric effect. So quantum biology isn't woo woo. It's sort of founded on people like Einstein, um, uh, Niels Bohr's work, David Bohm. So it is very scientific, although we don't go into the maths like that with people, because again, if you've got lots of electrons and they're fully charged with light, then according to your body you've got a good energy store and I think anybody who has struggled with their weight will, will categorically tell you that it doesn't defy the laws of thermodynamics that they do move they do eat less and they get bigger and they're or they 
move a lot, don't eat very much, lose weight, and then their hormones just go splat and then the weight comes back. So, so right. I think that's something that, again, we, we could talk about here because I know people are interested in food and hormones and leptin. And I think there's several things I wanted to tell people about from doing quantum biology in different countries. And I think the main mm -hmm. thing I want people to get from this is you can do quantum biology anywhere. There isn't yes. a perfect place to live. I've tried loads. I haven't yet been to the equator just because I think my mum and dad would would freak out so much at El Salvador and Mexico at the moment. Although my mum might go to Costa Rica that I think it's to explain to people there's so many things you can do even somewhere cold and dark like the UK. Yeah. And that's, I think that gets lost in the quantum biology and circadian biology world. A lot of times people say you have to move. It's not going to work unless you're in a uh, direct sun year round at the equator. And number one, I think there's some, some biological, um, I think that's incorrect biologically. If you think about our mitochondria, the people that have that extreme Northern haplotype, um, doesn't make sense. That type of person would never live on the equator year round and be exposed to that sort of light. Um, and it's not practical as well. A lot of people can't just pick up and move and quit their job and, and, and do these things that is like, you have to do this, you know? Um, now if someone gets in a really terrible health situation, it might be something to consider. I'm not going to say, take it off the table. It's a stupid idea, but there are ways, like you said, of implementing these strategies anywhere in the world, right? Yeah, definitely. And also another important thing, which we'll probably talk about is that you can buy extremely expensive equipment or, or you can behave like I do because because like I'm I don't like spending money, but I will on something. An, an object is my thing, but I'll choose very carefully my red light panel. And I, I happen to. I've got um, Kelly Bento's four wavelength panel at, at home and I massively missed that when I came to yours because even though you had the, a gigantic red light panel, which I'm sure would be beneficial for somebody else, I just found it too much. And then when I was um, interacting with your children, I had a portable red light that they didn't mind, but they ran away from the big light. So, mm -hmm. so again, for, like you just said, for somebody who needs a huge amount of red light, the giant panel would have been brilliant. But then for me personally, um, Kelly Bento's uh, light, uh, I missed that. And then the other thing I didn't have when I came to visit you is I didn't have my Magnetico to sleep on. Mm. And I think that's really useful for somebody who lives in an urban area because with grounding in an urban area and grounding sheets, which you mustn't plug in the wall, you can't really even plug in them in the garden either, just because of the, you'll become the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. And I tried that loads of times at yours, putting the grounding pole in the garden and ga every single time I didn't sleep properly. Mm -hmm. so, and I did it. I tried it at least four times um, and then uh, again, some people like PMF beds and other people don't, because I know your daughter loves it and she'd um, have 20 if she could. But then mm -hmm. I I wasn't keen, uh, really, but, but I'm not closed minded to it. And I think one of the differences, obviously, that people know about between the latitudes is it, it was there's way more sun in in Georgia. So maybe if you want to talk about the the weather there because i know i was laughing at you earlier because it's actually colder where you are at the moment our weather's better but then because yeah. you've got pretty much vitamin d all year round haven't you mm -hmm. yeah we i mean the uv index goes down to like one two so you really would have to like lay outside naked like all the entire day to get any vitamin d like to synthesize any but we do have uvb year round here um it's actually the 33rd latitude um but if you go like a few hours north no uvb and that's for most of the northern hemisphere uh come october november just depending on where you live the the, the further north that you live the faster that uvb goes away um, and then the UV index has to be a little bit higher in order for you to not have to spend hours and hours outside, like I mentioned, um, pretty much naked in order to actually get any vitamin D. But we do have stronger UV here in this latitude than you do where you live in the UK. 
Yeah, definitely. And also there is a function of how much UV light, particularly A or just solar yield, can dictate uh, how much and when you can eat carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's something that causes big confusion because I don't think there's anything evil any molecules that are evil i think it's all about context environment and balance and i think that was something that, that normally where i'd live i wouldn't would be really careful with carbohydrates and then when i came to visit you that there were just times because it was really sunny that mm -hmm. i just got massively cranky and i didn't know why there was no reason for it uh, and then um you just suggested oh hang on maybe it's a like a, a carb thing because they are allowed here because we had loads of sunny days and there was definitely mm -hmm. opportunities to make um, vitamin D. Um, mm -hmm. I had I checked my levels and also I have the D minder. I know it's not completely accurate, but it'll do and it's a good place to start. So maybe if you want to talk a bit about sort of circadian eating in different places and people's idea that carbs are evil. Yeah, I mean, I used to hold that idea as well. The carbs were evil and the carnivore diet was really very helpful for me to help reset my gut, my immune system, and to get rid of lifelong bloating and constipation, gut issues. But the problem is I think I did it too long. I think it's meant to be done for short spurts of time. And like I said, it was amazing for my gut and, and getting rid of the bloating and the horrible issues that I was having. Um, but I live in an area where we do have a good amount of sunlight. And after a while, my body started having a negative reaction from restricting carbs year round. Um, and it was kind of like a inflammation, just not a good thing. And so that's when I started and it was after I had talked with Jack and I had really started learning about leptin. I started learning about deuterium. One of the things that strong UV light does is it helps the body to deplete deuterium. And so if you are in an area where there is more UV light and you're leptin sensitive, because I've been working on my leptin sensitivity for years now, after, since I met Jack, and since I went through the whole fertility journey to get pregnant with my son, James, who is now 15 months old. And, um, so I've been doing the leptin thing for a while, becoming very leptin sensitive. And so when there is a bunch of UV light and there's strong UV, I do eat some carbohydrates and I do cycle them in. Um, I, a lot of times I still do eat pretty low carb keto. I feel better that way. However, if I don't have those cycle days, especially when we do have all this UV, I, again, I start to not feel well. And so I think it's about um, developing some metabolic flexibility and that helps you remain leptin sensitive as well. And knowing when it is time to sprinkle some of those, those foods in, to again, maintain that metabolic flexibility in your body. And um, I think it can be really helpful for people. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, just to, to add to the deuterium depletion, that also cold thermogenesis uh, can help deplete deuterium as well, because mm -hmm. in very simple terms, it sort of contracts the electron transport chain. So the electrons can flow down more efficiently. And then the, they're obviously going to be able to pass through complex four and mm -hmm. pump out more deuterium depleted water and in, in effect sort of flush you out from the inside. But also, again, I haven't got any issues with any kinds of ways of eating. I just think if it's working for somebody, keep mm -hmm. doing it. But, you know, sometimes people can get ridiculously strict with keto or um, plant based or mm -hmm. carnivore to the point where it's actually taking over their, their life mental, mm -hmm. mentally and it's not working anyway. So that's definitely a time. To, so like you say, because you mentioned temperature at the, at the beginning to look into other factors that could be affecting uh, the hormones. Yeah. And that's, that's one huge thing that I think gets lost in the diet community. I was telling you before I started recording, I put up a video today and the guest that I had on was talking about, um, smoothies and vegetables and nuts and seeds and these things being like health promoting. And a lot of my audience is more animal based, which I'm still heavily animal based and I don't really eat nuts and seeds and those types of things any time of the year, honestly. Um, but they were like all upset about it. And I'm like, the, the foundations of light, the foundations of your letting your body make this deuterium depleted water and looking at things through the lens of deuterium is a lot more important than getting lost in the dogma and the minutia of, you know, this diet versus this diet, plant-based versus carnivore versus vegan versus whatever. It's, it's a much 
bigger picture than that. And it's more based upon what's the light doing where you live? How strong is that UV light? How much are you outdoors, right? Because you could just be in this beautiful UV rich environment, but you're indoors all day behind windows. So you're not getting any of it. So your body not really going to benefit anyway. Um, and the, looking at those other signals that you're giving your body, remembering that food is a signal and the, the health of the mitochondria, the health of your hormones, everything is all about the signals that you are giving the body much more than just like dogma around this food versus that food. It's so much more, um, it's, 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 I, I want to say it's more simple than people want to want to believe, but it's not going to get you the clicks and views, but it is a little bit more simple than I think we're being led to believe in the diet world. Absolutely. And that reminds me of two other things when I visited the States, the noise pollution, because mm -hmm. I did an interview with Dr. Catherine Clinton, who we both know, who's wonderful. And I already knew about um, noise and cortisol levels. So again, that's something else to push your blood sugar up and to affect your um, metabolism. And mm -hmm. also there's much bigger blue light or artificial light pollution, maybe not in all of the US. I have been to quite a lot of places and I did notice it's much more lit than the UK because when I was um, at yours, we, we had Thanksgiving and it was going into Christmas and pretty much all the houses had Christmas lights, mm -hmm. lots of them. And people used to leave all of their lights on uh, like outside overnight. Then there was like your neighbor had put lights all the way around the garden whereas mm -hmm. I think I showed you a photo of my area and there was nobody with Christmas light even Christmas lights up yes we've got street lights here which are a nuisance so that drove me absolutely berserk because I was sticking stuff to like my window and like mylar trying to block it out because in the beginning I just didn't realize and I couldn't shut the window in the in the bedroom oh, yeah. either so I had some a few bad sleeps and then I realized that it was the blue light then mm -hmm there was leaf blowers then there was just general that there was construction like in the uk it's very regulated about construction so anybody from uk listening knows all about planning permission whereas in the us i've had numerous people um telling me about building projects happening that go on for over a year and it just completely oh, yeah. destroys their peace so that was a problem as well, because where I'm going with this is that even though you had more, there was more sun and I've been told so many times to go somewhere sunny, there were other problems th that caused metabolic issues, as mm -hmm. in blue light raises um, cortisol, cortisol and, and, and then the sound. Um, first of all, it, you can make noise in the US from, it started at 7 a.m., didn't it? And mm -hmm. it, it was, yeah. I can't remember, we had to look up what the council. noise ordinance is yeah. from 7 a.m until 11 p.m yeah because some nights we would be out or we would be up and we'd be like oh my god it is still going <laughs> and now that you've left it's gone it's totally quiet over there we don't have that they're not doing construction anymore um we're probably gonna have a different issue of them having parties but uh we've only had one of those so far on new year's but yeah the construction noise that's a huge thing that I think that a lot of people kind of just like learn to tune it out, but because I'm so sensitive, um, to noise, to just light to these things. And that happened more so when I got more in tune with my circadian rhythms and more in tune with quantum lifestyle. Yeah. It was definitely something that was driving up the cortisol was that the construction noise. Yeah, definitely. And then the other thing um, I'll bring up is because um, I like looking at prices of things. And also I was always commenting, oh, this lamb's double the price of the UK. And because we um, there was a place we bought all of the meat from, there was the ancestral blend and mm -hmm. it was really good quality grass fed. And you can get that all over the world. But I think inflation is very real in, in the US. But but because there was a seafood shop up the road um that that was very reasonable i have noticed that seafood is is cheaper by far in the uk and it mm. was there were things there like crawfish which i really liked and all sorts of other things and i think there's many things that get demonized and i i did an interview with dr michael crawford the dha expert and he said the fda recommends two fish a week and when they've done studies on mothers and and studies over many decades they found that a lack of fish and dha is it's a severe problem and mm. people's brains are shrinking iq is going down there's obviously other things but i was just saying for people who 
often a barrier people will say to eating well is, oh, I can't afford it, which leads me to something else when I was at yours because of time and stuff that goes mm -hmm. on. There often wasn't time to eat things. So mm -hmm. um, again, when it comes to sort of metabolic changes in, in the body, because we, I should have checked my weight when I was there, but because we saw each other every day, you can't tell if you gain or lose weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I nearly walked in on your, on the sauna and the shower and I was naked in your garden quite a lot. Your husband doesn't watch this channel anyway, so he won't. No. So, <laughs> but, but then I, I was telling you that um, when I got back to the UK, I just, I lost about six pounds for, you know, I was, there could have been lots of reasons, but mm. I think one of them was your electricity grid's different. It's 60 mm. hertz in the US. And and I have passed this around to art because the, the, the mitochondria function on a, it's 100 hertz harmonic in the UK is at 50. And I have heard certain people say that the 60 hertz is worse for sort of fat metabolism and the 50 hertz Jeez. is worse for autoimmunity and other things. But there's definitely a difference between that. And I, and I have many times heard of Americans that have moved, well, gone to Europe on holiday, eaten exactly mm -hmm, the same food. Weight. But, mm -hmm. but then we don't know, whether was it the food? Was it getting away from the noise, the blue light and stuff in the US? So, so we don't know. And also it's significantly colder here. Well, it was when I got back and I don't like turning the heating on and I open the windows. Um, and also something else is there's much more darkness here. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. you know, at, the, at the worst, it was like seven hours of, of daylight and again cortisol is a light driven hormone so when i'm back was back here i've been in a pretty I, I was in a good mood at yours but i've been like really chilled and happy considering it's the middle of winter and i think part of it is just really honoring and using the darkness properly because that was something i really missed when i was at yours um yeah so yeah because you, the children <laughs> The children don't let you sleep here. And so you would, you were sleeping on the very bottom floor. And so there were some nights where one of them was up and you would it'd be like elephants running above your, above your room, just shrieking, just like, yeah, it's, it can be rough here and it's harder. You know, I've got blue blockers, circadian lighting, try to do as many things as I can to mitigate that, but you're still, you're still not able to like get total darkness and get total sleep because you have these things called children that are also circadian disruptors oh absolutely but I think anybody with children will resonate with that because they always want mm -hmm. to have um, um projectile vomiting at like 2 a.m it's never like in at, at, in the daytime and but also the other thing about kids is it's like you can play with them and, and I we do we did spend a lot of time running after them and you you've got like mm -hmm. a loads of stairs so I don't I, we that's another thing we'd never counted how many steps we did in a day because literally the number of times we ran up and down those stairs and w with a toddler you, you's mm -hmm. literally running after and then I used to like walking your dog as well so that was something I, I kept complaining about there's no sidewalk and uh, you know I, I didn't really wear trust my grounding shoes I used my very minimal ones so I didn't want to just ground to the electrics and then obviously there's mm -hmm. the, the, the the traffic problem of your husband getting really concerned I was going to get decapitated collecting the mail uh, or, or we'd both get run over but by the traffic so I think that's again something and, and the traffic oh the train as well it was oh, like yeah. I was thinking you where are all these people driving at this time and why is that because the train used to honk at, like mm -hmm. at, in the middle of the night yeah all the time and it's like I can't I, I don't just if we, STF you you know it was yeah it, it was kind of a, a bonkers and then the other thing I think um because this is sort of like a, a a man thing as well that um I really got on with your husband and, and he really I gave up artificial sweeteners ages ago and sodas but I do really like soda and because of just sort of for socialness we used to just crack open sodas as if we were having a beer together and we <laughs> have like really sort of serious chats about putting the world to rights and politics and parenting. And, and it was like two men with beer, but, yeah. but it wasn't just one or two because he's a really generous man. And, and then it ended up being, oh, I've got a different flavor to try a different <laughs> flavor. And then some days we could have easily had three sodas. And, and I think as soon as I got back to the UK, I stopped it. And, and I did read a paper the other day about how, artificial sweeteners a big collection of them interfere with mm -hmm. POMC which is a major signaling um 
precursor we could say for leptin and i think yeah. from clinical experience we have found that a lot of people do everything right but they still have stevia it was stevia that was in the um mm -hmm. the sodas that, that we drank mm -hmm. so what's yeah your zevia i can't i think those are so gross like i can't drink them my husband loves them but i i guess i'm lucky i just i and repulsed by the Zevia sodas, but yeah, he loves them. And I have, I have seen a couple of different mechanisms that the artificial sweeteners can really impact leptin in a negative way. So I, you know, I recommend people stay away from those um, if they're trying to regain leptin sensitivity, but yeah, my husband is definitely, I mean, I, he's pretty leptin sensitive. He might be a little too leptin sensitive sometimes. I think he's just doesn't have a weight problem at all. Um, and so I'm not really super worried about his, his leptin sensitivity and the, the soda drinking is if that's the worst thing he does, he doesn't drink beer. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't do any of the, you know, the negative male habits you hear about the chew tobacco or any of that stuff. So if he wants to have a, a couple of stevia sweetened sodas, like, okay, you know, <laughs> also on an emotional level because there's also the sort of consciousness um and being kind to yourself side of mm -hmm. quantum biology i think the benefits that we got from having chats with our mm -hmm. pretend beers uh, in a way outweighs that because stevia is ba bad but there are much worse artificial sweeteners and i think it's like we, we used to say all the time about finding joy in something and i found great joy in buying random things for your children like and you did as well like the mm -hmm. the, the helium balloons and there's all yeah. sorts of things and it's i really made the most of having somebody else's kids that i could give back <laughs> so yeah <laughs> but i think also the whole sort of quantum entanglement and connection because it was like i'd known you and your husband all all my life and it could have easily gone horribly wrong we could have met uh, and in 24 hours i would be back on the airplane back to, right. to Chester, but it was one of these really interesting sort of consciousness and quantum entanglement um sort of experiences and i think the take home was there's again there's you know there isn't anywhere there's always no matter where you live there's always going to be some barrier or problem and and i have mm -hmm. worked out in all my travels is that sometimes i don't have a magnetico and sometimes i've got loads of sun sometimes it's absolutely freezing and i'll you know really go to town on using the cold because that's really good for leptin sensitivity. You did, well. you did that at my house and I, I couldn't even use my cold plunge until after you left because you oh, yeah. <laughs> that I have a Morosco forge and it makes ice, but I've never really utilized that feature because I just don't like it to go much lower than 40 degrees. And to mm -hmm. get the to make the ice, you have to get it down to, and this is Fahrenheit, you have to get it down to like 30, 32. But uh you had gotten it full of ice and then you were going in like three times a day which is something I would never tell anyone to do but I felt like you were so in tune with like I mean it, there was not a single morning I don't think that we were not outside at sunrise even if it was cold or raining like we would that was kind of when we both kind of like you know <laughs> we'd both be out there every morning and then the blue blockers would come on every single night um and you're so I feel like you could get away with a lot more than. Oh, oh no, it did that. mess. Me, it did mess me up, and also the other. It thing did is, or it didn't. Oh yeah, it, I did. Um, I was going to get to that because I think. Okay. The other important thing is your daughter doesn't like wearing shoes, and neither do no. I. So I didn't wear very many much shoes or clothes. Uh, yet still, it, it didn't over but with the with the cold plunge. I was experimenting. You you were right because I think is first of all I found out that I was just doing it too early in the day and too much and getting stressed out. And then I blamed mm -hmm. the coffee. <laughs> oh yeah. And and then there was times when we would something would happen in the morning and we wouldn't have any breakfast. And then we blamed that. Well, I blamed that. And then I realized, oh, hang on a minute, you're just doing this ridiculous temperature at too early. Mm -hmm. And then I just, like you said, um changed it. But the thing is, I just couldn't go in it for that long. Because I in a way, I think it's a bit more like cryotherapy when it's like 0. 0.5 um, because that would be 0. 0.5 degrees C, and then it was like 33 F that mm -hmm. I'm more of a, I'd rather go in longer, but a bit warmer. So, yeah. I, I, and I think it's really interesting to try that. I, I also used to really enjoy smashing the ice because it would make oh, great yeah. icebergs. So I'd have to get them out and it's really therapeutic just to smash things. And I'd put all the ice back in. So, so it definitely has a benefit. But, but also I tried to get your husband to put his leg in it because he had a bad knee. And I used to mm -hmm. chase him around the house with, with red light lamps. Because every time... 
we made him do it, he'd say, oh, it's so much better. So much but better. Yeah. Do it himself. Yeah. <laughs> and Kelly sent me another torch, which he started using because that was sometimes the only way I could get him to do the red light was using the the torch that Kelly Bento sent. Um, cause getting him in front of the panel, he would, oh, I don't have time and complain about it. But like, yeah, that was one of the things you kind of, you came at a time when things were really stressful in my house and they're still crazy, but I would say they were at like peak stress, um, with my daughter and it was just nuts. And you were kind of like, all right, I'm coming. Like we've never <laughs> met each other in person before. And you're like, I'm coming. And my, my husband was like, are you sure she's not a serial killer? I, I like, can't believe you're going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but he was just like, why does this woman from the UK want to come? Like, why? And I'm like, she is supposed, I don't know. She wants to come help. And I've been, we've gotten to be close and you were helping me run my group. And it was like, okay, come hurry up, get here now. And it was immediately like, I had known you my whole life or even just in another lifetime, it was like immediately a comfort thing. But when you got here, one of the things that you did, which was really helpful was like, Sarah, get back to your quantum stuff, like get back to your red light panel. Cause I had just gotten so overwhelmed with my daughter and her health problems that I had kind of, you know, stopped doing a lot of the things for myself. And so that was one of the things that she were like, all right, get back in front of your red light panel, get in the cold plunge. Let's go hiking on your mountain. We got to go to my mountain a few times. Cause that was one thing I, ha I haven't been back since you've left. I'm hoping to eventually get to do that, but, um, you know, that's one of the things that was really helpful about you being here is like having a quantum buddy and then to explain it to my husband as to why it's important. And, you know, the blue blockers at night, I, f I finally had a friend to wear blue blockers with at night, <laughs> you know, and not look like the crazy one. And then my husband would turn our, the first night that you got there, he was like all concerned because the house was really dark inside. <laughs> Oh yeah. And he was like, let me turn on some of these lights. And you were like, no, 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 no. And I was like, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. Because I turn my electricity. That's the other thing I can do. I can control every single electric in my house, and I can turn it all off if I want, and I can be in complete darkness. But in saying that, of me being the murderous um, British person, my mum thought that um, I was going to get murdered by by you and and your husband anyway. So it both it both is like a quantum thing that it was. They were my, my dad's got distant relatives in Atlanta, and he's been to Stone mm. Mountain. So he was really glad I went, and also he said you're going to get a big shock when you go but it'll be really mm -hmm. helpful in on another level um so yes it was there's so many quantum things that we could talk about because obviously there's the the cosmic tower um, oh yeah and the kind of running out of time because you're running a, a, an event and i'm participating in it and it's do you want to tell people about it because it's a really good opportunity to really dive in properly with what we've talked about but we've we've also not talked about quite a lot of other aspects of quantum and our colleagues that we do their stuff as well yeah i mean so carrie and i carrie bennett i know she's your uh community knows her my community knows her we're running a health transformation summit and we've collected our pick of people who we think really have the most interesting things to deliver to the community about like structured water um easy water carrie carrie just did a talk on easy water um Things like uh, light, why is that important for the mitochondria? Things like breathing, how that's important for mitochondria. We've got, we just kind of have collected our favorite people. I think it's about 20 people at this point um, and looking at health from the quantum lens so that people that are listening to this are like, okay, I want to learn more about this. I want to implement more of these things in my life because for me, I don't know about Gio, I, I think so, but these principles of quantum biology, circadian biology have actually given me a lot of freedom, as I was alluding to earlier, of not being caught in a diet camp or a war, but understanding my health through the lens of quantum biology and circadian biology and knowing that it can be done anywhere all over the world. And so that's really the goal of the summit. So it's free to sign up and to watch if you want to watch it live. And then if anyone wants to get the lifetime pass, you will also get about $2,000 worth of courses with that lifetime pass. And my circadian health for the busy person course, which is 147 retail is included in there. Carrie has about three webinars that are worth $300 that are in there. And then every single one of our speakers, including you have contributed a course or an ebook. So it's like a ridiculously huge value. 
And then anybody who gets that uh, lifetime pass is also entered into a contest to win um, a bundle of one of my courses. This has all my courses worth like $1,200 on a Carrie's bundle of all of her courses, a red light therapy panel from Kelly Bento, who we talked about a few times in this chat, as well as a $500 gift pack of blue blockers and things from Viva Rays. So Carrie and I are super excited about it because we just really want to make this information more accessible and available to as many people as possible. Because like I said, it really frees up a lot of your headspace and you feel better, you know? And, and so I, 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 like I said, I appreciate the chat and the time, but I think it's, it's important that people can access this information, right? Yeah, definitely. And I think it just triggered a thought in my mind about when I was in the US that the astronomical cost of healthcare because oh, people on all the And you saw how bad it is. Oh, here. yeah. And I saw the prices of um, the, for, for consultations. And I think anything that anybody can do, whether it's even something like mm -hmm. a long time ago for me, it was just learning to, to, to teach Pilates because it got rid mm -hmm. of all my back and neck pain because you feel very trapped if you've got some kind of health issue because first of all you think you're not going to get better and secondly mm -hmm. you're always dependent on somebody else and, and prices just go up and up and I think mm -hmm. it'll resonate with people in the US but sometimes you need to go out of your own country and look and see what healthcare and medication prescriptions and prices alike and then you learn a lot more about um or understand and i but i think pretty much everybody will think oh i don't want to spend a fortune on my health i don't want to get a chronic illness or a terminal mm -hmm. illness i don't want to be stuck on medication because i don't even know what it's doing so i think right even if people th think this might be woo woo that there's vast amounts of science backing up a lot of the quantum biology but, but i just think on a sort of uh, giving advice as a friend it's always very liberating to be able to fix yourself even yeah. if you need a practitioner to guide you the, the fact that you can be independent and like we were saying a lot of the quantum biology practices are free well they're all free and then like i was saying i don't like buying one-to-ones i like buying an object that i can have forever and even somebody on not the, the a big budget there's small versions of all the things we've taught and secondhand versions of lots of expensive things and i think sometimes you just need to know you don't know what you don't know if that makes mm -hmm. sense yeah absolutely absolutely and i think the more people that can understand this information the better because yeah you got to see firsthand the healthcare system here and how it's like a black hole a lot of the time and then you know like my son had this little skin condition and i went to the doctor and they were like steroids he needs oral steroids and topical and i was like i'm calling my homeopath and i was <laughs> no. like I'm like, I'm calling some um, UK general. You practice. call everyone. And okay. they actually re recommended the homeopathy, the same. Yeah, one, one of them did. And the, and the, um, and Dr. Neil just said, not necessary. And he replied in two minutes. And normally he's a bit slow. And he was like, no, 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 not necessary. Right. And guess what? I did the homeopathy. His skin's totally clear now. The little issue is totally gone. And I did not do steroids, but that's how we treat things here in the States. Um, and where the medical system is going is like, let's suppress it, suppress it. And even if it, it could be the wrong suppressive therapy, but let's just suppress it and, and charge you your copay and move on. And so this is a much more empowering way of looking at health and, uh, hopefully will be helpful for the people that watch. Yeah, definitely. And I think also the, um, U S along with lots of other countries are, it's absolutely beautiful mm -hmm. and it's massive and it's much easier to find nature i mean even mm -hmm. if you live in the city there you there's plenty of countryside in in different states uh, i'm not going to sort of name any or name or shame any places but it, it's very easy to just get away from it all it, it can be difficult for people in the uk somewhere like london but still we're mm -hmm. a much smaller country so relatively the distances are smaller so so and, and i think sometimes people think oh i can't be bothered whereas once you learn all of the physics of what going out in the country actually does like the Schumann resonance and sort of charging up with electrons, getting away from non-native EMFs, um, being outside all day camping. It, 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 it's, uh, it makes you understand, oh, this, this could be the sort of 
key piece in my jigsaw and and also you get addicted to nature and quantum biology but in a mm -hmm. good way so it's not like trying to stick to a diet you, you actually just do it because you just your body's naturally designed to behave like that so it'll crave or or, or just make you do it because I, I don't you know with, with people who are new to it sometimes the sunrise is a barrier but once you mm -hmm. get into it you get I get really agitated or oh, I'm not doing a zoom call because I'll miss the sunrise or right you know no no I'm gonna I've woken up a bit early but I'm just gonna stay in the dark I'll listen to a podcast or meditate I'm not touching but you know it becomes not quite touching the phone yeah yeah and and it's not it's not an ordeal whereas for people mm -hmm. who've been who, who, who struggle with their weight because we both have it, it, it once mm -hmm. people start you know the diet starts off okay but then it sort of starts to sort of close in on you and restrict you and it, it, it's it's different when you follow a quantum approach and then I have found mm -hmm. that I've completely forgotten about food partly because there's other things more important but also I've reframed it in my mind as electrons and hydrogen and information yes and then once you understand about the light and the grounding and the leptin, it does give you more freedom. And I think it's important to be able to understand things at the physical level or physics to be able to wade through all the BS online, because yes. I've got no issues whatsoever with people being entrepreneurs or running a business. But I have got an issue with people making up nutritional misinformation because they want to sell something um, yeah. that good for the public to start with. And they feed them misinformation about drinks and different foods and i think when you understand the quantum approach you can work it out for yourself and that goes yeah. for as well yeah a, a hundred percent so i feel like it's just empowerment all around and yeah there's a lot of because we get them in our groups you have a private group i have a private group you can help me in my private group and people come in there and they're like i saw this podcast i read this i heard this video this person says this but i'm like stop <laughs> just stop like let's look at it from the lens of circadian biology, quantum biology. And then does that make sense? Does that actually make sense? A lot of times, no. A lot of times, maybe there's a half truth in there, but you know what does Jack always say? A half truth is still a lie. So it, it really does free up a lot of headspace when you begin to make the shift and look at things at, at this lens, you know? So I, I hope this was helpful for people and Hope people will come to the summit and learn more. You are including in the gift package your um, food choice, the food yes, list, um, right? Yes, deuterium. Uh, and I'll probably um, add in some a little bit of my minerals course as well. Oh, but nice. Regarding the summit, the, the, it starts on the 25th, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, starts on the 25th. You have up until the 30th to get that lifetime pass. So if you're like, I just want to sign up for free and see the chats, you know, you can sign up for free and watch all the talks live. And then if you're like, oh, I, re I really want that gift package with all these things, you've got a, de a list of deuterium foods yeah. in yours, which is people ask me for that all the time. How much do you is so you already have that laid out for people who get that gift package. So you can get the gift package if you sign up for free and get it later, or you can say, you know what, I want to go ahead and get it now and, and sign up with the gift package. There's, you could do it both ways. So what happens if somebody wants to buy the, the package in February? I mean, they'll obviously have missed the prize draw, but will this package be, say, if somebody watches this video in three weeks, will mm -hmm. they have the opportunity to be able to purchase what they've missed because, um, or, or, do, or do they have to do it as soon as possible? Carrie and I are talking about doing an encore uh, weekend. Okay. And so we're kind of still working out the details of that. So for, as of right now, as of the day we're recording this and it'll go out, if you really want this uh, now, then you'll definitely want to do it uh, before the 25th. But we are talking about a way of making it evergreen so people can get it after the fact. But um, they'll definitely, be... miss, they'll miss the prize draw. And the live Q and A. There's a live, live Q and A on the 30th. But um, then just because of algorithms yeah if, if somebody happens to watch this in a year's time and thought oh i really wanted to go to that you'll be having other ones but also it's yes. the kind of they could reach out to me you or carrie or you and carrie and you might be able to find them something but basically if people want a book they need to, to, to do it as soon as possible and the cutoff day is the 30th of january Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and if it, if we do decide to have it evergreen so they could buy it after the fact then the link that you put under your show description and i'm going to post this on my channel those links will still work so you can always go down 
try the link out. If it works, then cool. We decided to do it evergreen. If it doesn't, then stay tuned for an encore presentation where we may have some more cool gifts to give away and things like that and added speakers. Cause we are talking about adding more speakers down the road. Cause some people we did, we recorded everything during the holidays and there were a couple people that we really wanted that couldn't do it because of holiday commitments. So we do have plans to add more speakers and, and different things down the road. So stay tuned. Great. Well, it's been a fun chat and I'm, I'll see you, I think in person again in March. Well, I did say Wonderful. I was coming today um, because you, it's so cold there and I love the cold, but I think um, my cat would mind if I left at the moment. You left again, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sarah. It's been lots of fun. Thank you so much for listening to this episode with my dear friend, Dr. Sarah. She's going to be back here in March. So maybe we'll have to do a part two of talking about circadian biology, quantum biology, the differences between the UK and the United States, a northern latitude, southern latitude, and the implications on insulin, cortisol, what all of that really looks like. So I hope this was fun and informative and you had a really good time. Also, a quick reminder, if you do want to sign up for that Health Transformation Summit, there is a link to sign up for free in the show notes and in the pinned comment. And then if you want to get that VIP pass, that's also in the pinned comment as well and in the show notes. One more thing about the VIP pass, if you do decide to go that route, we're having a contest. So there are several winners. One will get the bundle of all of my courses worth $1,300. One will get the bundle of all of Carrie's courses worth about $1,300. There's a $500 gift pack from Viva Rays, as well as a red light therapy panel from Kelly Bento. So lots of amazing stuff. I hope that you will at least come to the free version and learn as much as you can and grab that VIP pass if you want more value. Thank you again for listening to this bonus episode of the Sarah Kleiner Wellness YouTube channel and the Evolving Wellness Podcast. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave us a comment, a like if you're on YouTube, and if you're on Spotify or Apple, leave us up to a five-star review, share it with a friend or family member. It will help get to show out to more people. Thanks again for listening or watching. I'll talk to you again soon.